वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर शाति बिश्वास फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इस्लामिक हिस्ट्री एंड कल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलकाटा टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल द मोगल्स लैंड रेवेन्यू एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन फ्रॉम द पेपर इंडियन पॉलिटी इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द हिस्ट्री ऑफ लैंड रेवेन्यू एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द मोगल्स द मेजरमेंट system of the land and productivity the collection method in various regions the type of land under revenue and the condition of the peasants under such system now moving on to the land revenue administration the elaborate mudal empire was established on the basis of organized land revenue system the technological advancement and irrigation system during the period gave a large boost to the agricultural system the agricultural surplus gave the boost to the formation of the mughal empire undoubtedly the first two rulers babur and humayun was not able to consolidate their rule it was akbar who gave the real foundation to the land revenue system the system did not abolish the exploitation of the state but since it was organized it was able to control the exploitation of the local aristocracy to a large extent like all medieval states the land tax fixed by the state was very very high the system of measuring of land and collecting of revenue on the basis of production was attempted much earlier it was given a fresh start during the time of delhi sultanate and moved on to the times of the early moguls and then to the time a brief period of sher shah and then the final touch was given by akbar before he the system moved on to the british alauddin khalji tried to segregate the peasants on the basis of their holdings and production this was the rudimentary start to what come later was completed by akbar the peasants during delhi sultanate were reduced to the level of bare subsistence because of the high revenue the system was different for what it was introduced by sher shah sher shah for the first time tried to scientifically measure the land under cultivation and fix the revenue on depending on the productivity but of course sher shah's time was brief and he could not complete what he started akbar inherited the legacy of sher shah the holdings in india were never uniform and the disparity between the ordinary peasant and the class above them was huge and this was the real cause of the problems that rose in the collection of revenue the rural aristocracy controlled the large holdings and paid very very little revenue the records say that during the time of mohammed bin tughlaq it was realized that there was little scope to enhance the land revenue as the revenue was high so the royalty tried different means of increasing the revenue but could not hike the tax any more as that would have led to large scale upheaval of the peasantry during the medieval time it was realized that there was a limit to extraction from the peasant and that would keep the society in order sher shah adopted the system of measurement of land known as zapt this system continued till 1579 during the time of akbar that is his 24th year the zapt system worked from lahore to alhabad that is the core area of the empire Bairam Khan's regency saw the increase in number of claimants and thus the assessment of the jagirdars was high resulting in discontent of the nobles In 1562 Akbar was the for the first time trying to bring some change Asaf Khan was then the wazir who was ineffective and therefore immediately removed from the whole affair 
Asaf Khan was replaced by someone called Ahmad Khan who was in charge of the Khalisa or the crown land. His measures brought financial relief to the emperor. For the first time, Khalisa land was separated from the Jagi land. Most productive lands were now included as the crown land or the Khalisa land. For 10 years, Akbar kept the cash rate fixed for the crop so that the revenue that is earned by the state remained fixed. The converted rate was called Dastur ul Amal. The rate was fixed by Shesha and the rate was fixed as per the royal camp. One has to understand that the prices in the villages were much less compared to the center and thus what the peasants had to pay was much higher and the miseries of course was much much reason. The second word attempt was taken by Raja Todarmal and Muzaffar Khan to change the scenario. The Kanun goes for the first time was asked to give a detailed account of the cultivated land and the non-cultivated land in the villages along with the exact amount to produce and the land revenue figures or known which is known as Taksimat. In 1567 to 71 10 Kanun goes looked after the estimate of the Khalisa land and the assessment of Jama or Jamai Rakmi of Bairam Khan was kept aside and a new estimate was set. On the basis of the information gathered, the prices of crops were now set on the basis of this of the region of an uniform rate chart. Abul Fazal in his Ayn mentions that the rate charts in the 19th year price of the different provinces or the rate list was called Dastur. The rate was stated as a minimum to the maximum price. The cash rate thus of wheat in Subha Agra would be from let's say 56 to 60 dams per bigha in the 11th year and from 36 to 74 dam in the 17th year. It is difficult to ascertain whether this rate only reflected the cash rate or even the productivity of the time. Every earlier the state claim was dependent upon the measurement later, this was replaced by what is known as a Kanput or the estimation of production. This system did improve the revenue collection but it had its own lacuna. The Kanun goes always did not reveal the real picture and they were also controlled by the local zamindars who would otherwise not give the exact revenue picture to the state. The crop rates were incorrect, so was the production declaration. The system of Kankut or estimation was therefore incorrect and it gave enormous scope to the officials to become corrupt. The price list had to be checked and sanctioned by the court and then therefore the process would take a very very long time to reach to the center. The empire expanded and thus to reach the capital from the peripheral region took enormous time. Added to this was the fluctuation in the price in different seasons and thus it became very a difficult situation for the state. Now this was the matrix as to which the a uh, much much scientific Dahasala system was introduced and worked out by Akbar. The incomplete information and the expanding empire aggravated the distress among the peasants regarding tax and the mismanagement of the state regarding collection reached a new height and thus a 10-year assessment system was introduced in the 24th year in 1579. Now based on this 10 years calculation the state demanded a cash rate based on long productivity and local prices.
In the year 1574, the land that yielded 1 crore rupee or above, that is 2.5 lakh rupee, was placed under an amil called the Karoris. The Karori, with the help of the treasurer, then a surveyor, surveyor and a staff, measured the land and assessed the cultivation. This system again was introduced in the core areas from Lahore to Allahabad and not beyond that. An attempt was made to calculate the non-cultivated land and a drive was given to encourage the peasants to bring this under cultivation within three years. The work was not successful in all the areas. Measurement was done by a new system called Jarib, which is a bamboo stick with iron rings of a particular lane. So, and the older Jarib, which was a hempen rope and much smaller, was then discarded. In 1576, all the land between Lahore and Allahabad was brought under Khalisa or direct administration of the crown. Along with this, the dark system was introduced, which branded all the horses of the nobles. This brought certain transparency. After the assessment was done, then the Jagir system was brought back to this core area. In 1579, land was divided into Dastur or circle based on productivity. The land was marked in every pargana. The production was estimated for last 10 years along with the market rate of the produce. Based on that, an average was calculated and one tenth was fixed as the rate of tax annually. This system put the state in a comfortable position regarding its income. The peasants knew the revenue they had to pay. The worst part of this system, of course, was the risk of crop failure that was put on the shoulder of the peasant and the state took no onus. All of this calculation was based on previous 10 years assessment and the calculation definitely was very, very complex. It was not based on average price of the crop converted to crash in the last 10 years. It was based on the productivity and local prices during the last 10 years and an average was made based on the information. The fluctuation in case of cash crops like cotton, indigo, sugarcane, oil, seeds, poppy and vegetables were not considered and the rate was fixed based on a good harvest. The lands were categorized on the basis of continuity of cultivation. The land was cultivated regularly, were known as polage or the paid regular tax. The land that was kept fallow for a year was called parauti or the and paid regular tax on the year of production only. Charter was the land that was kept fallow for three to four years. In this kind of land, tax was paid in progressive rate. In the third year, full tax had to be paid. The Banjur lands were the cultivable wastelands. A special measure was taken by the state to encourage the peasants to cultivate this cultivable wasteland or Banjur land and at times the Kavi or agricultural loans were also given to them and tax was collected from regularly from the fifth year. Lands were further divided into three types based on productivity. The state share remained one third in each case in the first case. The less productive areas of Multan and Rajasthan, the share became one fourth and areas like Kashmir, which produce saffron would give half of its produce. The state demand was not equal to what the peasants had to pay in real. Added to the state demand was the various cesses levied by the state and also the demands of the local or regional overlords. Apart 
from the cess on animals and other things depending on the region the peasants had to pay the share demanded by zamindars they also had to pay for village maintenance the peasants in case of non payment of state demand could be ejected or in some cases even given death penalty now how did this dhasala system work The Dasala system, as mentioned earlier, was introduced between Lahore and Allahabad, including Gujarat, Multan, Malwa, and certain parts of Bihar. It is true that the system did not cover the whole province by any means. The Amal Guzars or the collectors were instructed that on the basis of preference, apart from the Zab system, appraisement or kankut or crop sharing or batai. was also applied to the land and taxes be collected accordingly in case of kanpur the whole land was measured by jarib and then the standing crop was estimated by inspection in case of any doubt the crop was cut and then segregated on the basis of quality and then an average a calculation was made There are three types of crop sharing. In the first case, the crops were reaped and stacked and they divided in the agreement of the parties. So this system is called the bhauli. In the second system known as batai, the fields were divided after it was sown. The third type involved more inspectors and was a bit complicated. it was known as lang batai the grains were cut and heaped after which it was divided in kashmir following the legacy of central asia the produce was computed on the basis of kharwar or as load and then it was divided the term nasak is also used in case of assessment probably it included the previous assessment and the basis on which the rates would have been fixed in case of disagreement of course there was scope for fresh assessment even if the peasant would want so nasab was definitely based on zapt in any case the peasant always had the option of batai or crop sharing batai was preferred in during the time of crop failure because that would give the peasants a kind of a relief as the cash revenue was always very high depending on the zap system although the state preferred cash but the option of payment in kind was also there in certain parts of the empire the peasants had no option of paying crop of one season in cash and the second season in kind the crops paid in kind was always converted to cash immediately as per the local rate the contemporary documents testify to the buff fact that thus the system had certain flexibility when it came to practical use and this would of course keep the peasants content otherwise in certain parts of the country peasant uprising would have become very very frequent the official instructions rido remained very rigid the crop failure and fluctuation of the market made the practical use much less complicated during this period the village was not assessed on the whole the state emphasized to assess the real state of agriculture and thus promoted to deal with cultivators as an individual this system was convenient for the peasants in india as because of the caste based hierarchy which always kept the peasants at a lower rung of the society in the khalisa land or the land under the jagirdar the state insisted for direct payment the reality is that most of the land was under the zamindars and they insisted to pay peshkash the peshkash thankfully was based on the system of zat or in measurement during the time of akbar in this regard the state received considerable amount of cooperation 
from the zamindars and the kanunpurs. This system of course was prevalent between more settled areas from Lahore to Allahabad and it was very difficult to bring into this account the peripheral areas, even areas like Multan and Bengal. The zamindars were allowed to collect their traditional dues along with the amount in the patta or the kabuliyat. Now, what is a kabuliyat? Kabuliyat was the letter of acceptance from the peasant in which the dues would be written clearly. But of course, to an illiterate peasant, this kabuliyat had no other value. It was done because of the convenience of the state. The collection was mostly done by the headmen or the zamindars who would be manipulating these rates. In spite of this limitation, the state had greater hold of the villages now compared to the earlier times. The system of Dasala was more or less permanent and not much changes were done during the time of the imperial Mughals. In case of natural disaster or improvement in agriculture or expansion of agricultural land, alterations accordingly was made or at least the scope was there. The Banjar lands paid taxes after fourth year and the Amal Guzars took special care to see that cultivable, cultivable wastelands were brought under cultivation. Provision of Takavi or agricultural loan was given in case of natural calamities or for digging wells or canals and sowing of cash crops. The state thus promoted as well as shared the benefits of improved agriculture. Rates were also altered according to the prices of the market. Like in 1585 and 86, the demand was reduced in the province of Delhi over the Nagra as the prices of the cash crops and the food crops fell because the productivity increased. Likewise, in 1598, the demand was raised in Lahore as a, then it was reduced in the consequent years depending on the prices in the market. There was also provision for declaring a piece of land Nabud or not soon in case of drought or in any other calamity. Whenever this land would have been brought under, under uh, agricultural use again, then it would levy, it would have the, have the same revenue. Technically, it seems that the cultivator was enough guarded, but by all practical means, the case was not such and the demand of the revenue was so high the areas were a common feature in this land revenue system. The real cause was again the hierarchical structure of the caste-based society and the relief of the government was meager compared to the traditional demand of the overlord of the villages which never had any relaxation. The Amils during Todermal's period was pressurized to pay up the areas and obviously this pressure trickled down to the person. So all the pressure that came from the center definitely came for the middle tier or the middlemen but of course that trickled down to the peasantry who was there in the lower rung. The unrest was so acute during 1585 that a commission had to be set to look and probe into the matter. The commission of 1585 reported that the areas were inflated due to the assumption and not actual production. The land under, not under cultivation were also included in this demand. The Amils who were corrupt were punished and the Amils who were arrested arbitrarily was, were relieved. On the basis of the report of the commission, a standard rate for measuring was set and that was charged from the cultivators. To combat the situation, again a new yard of 33 inches was introduced as a measuring tool known as Ghazi Ilahi and the previous Ghazi Sikandari was discarded. The new yard was 14% 14, 14 longer than the previous one making measurement much easier. 
The measurement of land in Bigha, which was 60 by 60 yard initially, was now bigger by 10.5%. The Dastur or calculations of land and the production again was revised because of the recommendation of this commission. Thus, the Mughal revenue system tried to assess land and fix the rate of revenue uniformly as per the market rate. The income of the state by this process was stabilized. Agriculture was given a boost by various trade measures. The situation of the peasants changed considerably, but of course, the exploitation did not end. The peasants were aware as to how much they had to pay, but the demand definitely was very, very high throughout the empire. The relief measures, though, was a kind of incentive, at least in the main areas between Lahore and Allahabad, which always remained in, under direct rule. The system regularized the income of the empire as such that it could enhance the empire building process of the imperial Mughals. Compared to the revenue system elsewhere in the contemporary world, the measures taken were definitely modern and very scientific. The system again depended on the strong center as the control and efficiency of the administrative system was a key to the success of the system. The system that was initiated by Alauddin Khalji and the Toglaks, followed by Sher Shah, was given the ultimate shape therefore by Akbar. Minor changes were done by his successors, but this system more or less continued in the subcontinent till the advent of the English. So now let us summarize as to what we have discussed. By the land revenue administration of the Mughals, a uniform land revenue administration in the subcontinent was given a final touch. The system was based on proper calculation of the land and the prices of the crop. The peasants came to know beforehand as to how much the revenue they had to pay for the first time. State gave agricultural loan at times of need. The system was flexible to incorporate changes and the land revenue administration was much scientific compared to its time. Thank you for your patient hearing. And you can go back to the e-text for further reading. Thank you.